Dr. Memuna Kadiri. Yes, her profile is up right there for you to see. A round of applause, ma'am, as she comes up. Thank you so much. People that I love, that their parents, everybody have checked out and agreed. One person says, you cannot marry. And yours truly, you shell everything else and you don't marry. That's one structure must, that must be pulled down. But, doctor. I'm not a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a lawyer. So let me start by saying that um, when we talk about structures, I think um, every human being under the sound of my voice, whether you are being digital or not, you are a product of the home. Even that you are a doctor, that you are trained for, does not mean you are safe. That you are a president of a country does not mean you are safe. He dare me that that was a president. He was, tra he was a trained military man who became a president. Hitler was trained as a politician. He was trained. He became a president, he slaughtered 62 million people. That's 2.5% of, of, of the entire population of the world. Ted Bundy is one of the most celebrated serial killers. He slaughtered 34 people by confession. Investigation revealed that he slaughtered between 34 and 100 people. But it's instructive to note that Ted Bundy read psychology first degree. He was reading law when he was arrested. So that you are a doctor, you are a lawyer, you are trained for all of these things, you are still safe. So there's another kind of training that we are not talking about, which is the home. Everybody is a product of a home. Let me tell you, we don't have a marriage problem. We don't have a national problem. We don't have any, the only problem I believe we have is a mismanaged childhood that manifests itself in that social adultery. That's what we are dealing with. And so when you are talking about structure, we need to revisit the home. We need to revisit our own kind of culture. And when I talk about culture here, yeah, I talk about dominant value system that produced us, that make every intervention, which is called training, a means of abuse. For example, you yell at a child because you were yelled at growing up. Now, yelling at a child, I've done an extensive work on communication with children. And I found in my research that every synonym for shouting is found in the animal kingdom, like barking, <laughs> like howling, which means God did not create human beings to communicate by shouting. Imagine that I'm talking to one person, I'm talking like this, would you run away? That is the number one sign of madness you are talking about. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me bring it home. So you talk about killing a child. You say the Bible says uh, 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 there's madness in the heart of the child, right? So you kill a child. So you come and tell me that you have become who you have become today because you were killed. Then I ask you, who have you become? Maybe you are a professor. You are a doctor. Okay, let's take Hitler or Richard Nixon. Richard Nixon was the president of the country, secured. He was supposed to be the most secured person in the country, yet the most insecure. He was still interested in, in tapping people's step and all of that. Now, the age, you are, the age performance of Donald Trump has been put as a five-year-old boy. So the question now is this, that you are now a billionaire, that you, are, you now became a president. Does that mean you are sane? So you look at the things you are dealing with. You wanted to say no, you said yes. You wanted to say yes, you said no. You look at all this madness that you are dealing with inside of you. Somebody marched march on you. He said, out. You say, uh, you laugh. Because it's your boss, you don't want to be sad. And you are managing all of that madness. And you still come to tell me. You still come to tell me that scaling is what has made you to become. Unfortunately, we have run into a trouble. Because school will tell you. School will tell you. You go to school, they put picture, lawyer. The book picture, doctor. <laughs> doctor is not an achievement. A lawyer in Amukoko was found sexually molesting children. Is that not, is, is not a lawyer? The other day, Amrobas were arrested in, arrested in Anopaja. What their leader is a medical doctor trained. So what are we talking about? So what should we begin to do? We need to begin to value human beings above what they possess. Because the life of a man does not consist in the abundance of his possession. And so, and, and so, and so that is why, this is my submission. This is my submission. We need to go back to what Prince Moore is talking about. We need to go back to the family. That is the decision that prepares us for life. Except you don't need to be prepared to be a, the training you need to be a doctor is not the training you need to be a husband. That's why people working in multinational are beating up their wives. Though they have gone to school. 
So what does the de emphasize this education of somebody went to, for somebody to become a doctor, he went to school. For somebody to be so married, people are not being trained. Who's going to train you? You are prepared for life. Because I tell teachers when I train them, you don't have two brains. You don't bring one brain to school and drop one at home. It's the same brain you use at home, you use in school. So if we don't deal with that brain that is working at home, and we're just dealing with how you are not going to abuse children in school, you are even abusing your own children. And finally, let me talk about the hypocrisy of our society. The hypocrisy of our society is that a school owner says in our school we don't care. This same school owner goes home to kill his own children. Our own children. The teacher does not care. The teacher goes back home. All the kid is not able to do at home, he gets to do it on his own children. And now, finally, now, now, so in that team, in that team, you don't understand that we are deceiving ourselves. So we need to, uh, we need to dethrone this culture of hypocrisy, this culture of deception, this culture of lies, living in lies. You know the things that you are going through. So I revert back by saying the solution for way forward in the immediate. Let me tell you something. For, more, for some of us, there's no hope. I have lost my virginity at the age of six. When my father wanted to kill me, he would tie my hands, he would tie my legs. He would strip me naked. The only things I saw tied growing up were goats, were chicken. So I must have received inspiration to behave like an animal. Now, not only that, when I was growing up, we lived in shouting, and we must live to shout. And so my father shouted on my mother, then there's people calling prayer and all of that, so I grew up shouting. So what is my temperament? My temperament is my environment. So, so, so finally, so finally, so finally, so let me say this to you. So let me say this to you. So why do we go from here? If you do not understand my story, you cannot know where I'm coming from. I am not living a normal life. And whether I'm going to be normal for the rest of my life is a symposium discussion for another day. So what we can begin to do is that I remain in my state of abnormalcy. Because whatever is damaged in childhood is damaged forever. Even at the level of divine intervention, we have a lot of work to do. So how do I live today? I live... I don't live by default. My default is damaged. My brain is programmed to think in possibility. My brain, my brain is programmed to think possibility. Possibility, I have to talk to myself. So there's a, there's a training there, and that training is a program, very potent and strong. So your, most of your actions are reflexive at the level of the best of therapy. So what have I been able to do? I've been able to remain in my state of consciousness to continue to deal with my state of default. Because if I leave myself to my default, I will mess up. Thank you. Wow, wow. Time will accumulate for president, anybody. And so, I will personally do your poster. Can you see the passion? Man. I, wow, wow. That was an amazing one. Please, a round of applause for him again. Wow. All right, basically, what he has just said is that um, our childhood plays a vital role in how we turn out. And I deal with a lot of parents on a day-to-day -day basis, and they keep saying, our, our world has changed. The world growing up, our parents trained us right. I, they, they, they hit so what how our parents trained us was it really the right way to go? And so today, when you see people say, um, um, you, you know, I need to hit my child, spare the rod and spoil the child. You know, they will just quote that part of the Bible. And they say, I really need to beat him. I need to yell for him to understand. Our parents did it, and today I'm here. How did you turn out? It's our age grades that are rapists up and down and murderers and armed robbers. So did we really turn out right? So we need a change. We need a paradigm shift. And that's why we're here today. So um, let's move on to the next question which um, Tai will try, you know, he, he, he did a great job of bringing out. How does a dysfunctional childhood affect the quality of um, family life in Africa? And are there templates people can use to promote a functional family life? Um, any volunteers to If you know what you are dealing with, See, that is, if you have a dick, you don't cut off your head. I think once your di diagnosis is wrong, your prescription will be wrong. Chief Danifai me was a very rich man, very rich. But he had cardiac problem from 
from very young age. Then he went to see his doctor. The doctor said it's cardiac issue. They started treating him. Unknown to him, he was dealing with lung cancer. By the time they were going to discover that it was lung cancer, his money could not help him anymore because of wrong, wrong diagnosis. I think the first thing we need to understand is to understand the impact of childhood. Now, if my car has its, its heat and I take it to a panel beater, if I'm not changing the door and they put body filler, if somebody, if anybody moves close, the car can be beautiful from afar. But once somebody moves close and looks at the car, it will see that there's a dent here. That's how childhood dents are. Human beings are not created to be abused. We are created as a gift to be treasured. Once somebody begins to tamper with that configuration by God, what happens is that that tampering was not factored in into the equation. So you now, now see a situation where you now begin to deal with almost a lifetime the impact of your wrong upbringing. So the first thing you need to understand is that how was I treated? You must understand your history. When you understand your history, that will inform you how you behave the way you behave. Now let me give you an example. If I sleep in the city room by myself, if I sleep, if nobody wakes me up, I'm fine. I can sleep there till daybreak. If I wake up at about 3 a.m., I can go into my room. But if my wife till tomorrow makes the mistake of waking me, once she wakes me, I start and say, Kenya, 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 in my dialect, it's being, what's that, what's that, what's that? So after we've been married for like six years, then she asked me, I won't be waking you up again. I said, why? I said, because anytime I wake you up, you are hysterical, you shout, Kenya, 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 and all of that. Because I know that behavior is found in my childhood. Upbringing. So I traced my mind back. How were we woken up? You've gone to bed. A child has gone to bed. A normal child. He didn't do anything going to bed. He didn't do anything wrong. He slept in his own home with his father and his mother. Then his father wants to wake him up in the morning. He shows up with a coach. And as he shows up, he hits you. Lord Obuku, that is, the child that will not do well. Lord Obuku, wait this one, wait this one, wait this one. Wait this one. You are still sleeping. Your mates are woken up. So he hits you. When my father hits me, you stand up. When you stand up, you run, you hit your head against the wall, you come back again. My friend, so you are woken up with hostility at 47 years old. So when somebody, if I sleep, dead, dead, nobody wakes me up, I'm fine. And when so, once somebody wakes me up, I say, can you, can you, can you, can you, what's that? I'm, I'm afraid. The question is that, it's not, it, now, now, this is the question. You can run all the therapy you want. Are you getting it? The truth of the matter is that in the depth of my son, transfusion, that is registered there. So what do we need to do? We need to develop programs that will help us to be who we ought to be despite the dent of our childhood. If all your life you want to correct all of the dent of childhood, you will live a lifetime doing it. Because it's a lifetime. And the truth of the matter is that I have been in the laboratory of change for 20 years, consciously, in the laboratory of change for 20 years. And I tell you, I'm still work in progress. If I leave myself to my default, it's a crisis. So I want to charge us. We need to understand what we are dealing with. When we understand what we are dealing with, we can now begin to find the solution to it, which is the fact that people don't make love. Values do. Values do. If you are a very selfish person, it's going to reflect in your relationship with your wife all around. Okay, so it's not about what is happening in the marriage, really. It's about the two people that are involved in the marriage, the value they have chosen to embrace. Now, I needed a lot of repair because I've lost my virginity at the age of six. That's the year I started primary school. And there was this particular woman my mother would leave me with, who stripped me naked and deal with a five-year-old boy what a woman should do with a man. And that happened consistently. Now, in 2015, UNICEF did a documentary, 30-minute documentary on my story because it was alarming to them. And that happened as a teenager, I started having anal sex. In today's parlance, we call it homosexuality. As a teenager, I started uh, taking my father's neighbor's daughter into my father's bedroom, I molested that sex too. So by the time I became a teenager, entered the university, I just went mad with sex. That is prostitutes, no, no feeling. Prostitutes, those on the street, those outside. At that time in Lagos, I knew all the prostitute joints. 
And any city I visited, I made it a point of duty to seek out a positive job. Now, here was I, I would live that kind of life, you know. One day when the school bus, I was trying to count how many girls have I slept with here, and they were handful. So that was the rugged kind of life I've lived. The time will fail me to talk about, you know, instances where we couldn't go on because you have Monday, you have you, you lock you lock up a girl from Friday, Friday two times, Saturday three times, by Sunday the place is soft. So there's nothing to do again. Not because both of you were tired, but because you have to respect that reality. So I now got married to a woman who was a virgin. I married my wife as a virgin. So when we were discussing our sexual realities before we got married, I was asking, are you sure this thing is going to really, how is going to plan? Because in my head, I have seen many girls. I have seen many experts. I've seen men that you were the one, I've seen girls that you were the one that would be tired. Now I'm getting married to a woman who have not seen any of that. So there's likely there was definitely going to be a problem of of a problem of comparison. So so what I needed to do was to first desensitize myself and begin to take my life. What, now, now the first thing we did in our marriage was to commit ourselves to um, 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 uh, corporate learning. Uh, and we got this particular book, I forgot the name of the book now. We started looking at it. We started relearning. I started unlearning all the things that I was supposed to know because I knew with all of that, there were many things I wanted to do. You talk about blue film. Eh? I, I don't need to watch blue film again. I've watched enough blue film for a lifetime before I became a Christian. Are you getting it? So I, I, see, I see a lot of pictures. If a girl bend down to pick a pee, something is likely to come to my head because I've seen all kinds of things. And so from that perverted mindset, which is not the same again today, I have to begin to work with my wife. So who says, if somebody is far apart, you know, has experience, and God married somebody who does not, you have to, like, I like the example he said, you now have to calm down and understand now there's a major channel. Now my wife and I have been married for 11 years, we don't have children yet. Now there's some people who have said, it was your lifestyle that caused the trouble. Do you know how many... Now, but medicine does not say so. I guess in, as of today, we've done all kinds of tests. Medicine did not say so. Medical science has not said it was a lifestyle. But for the understanding of my wife, he, had the, he, he could have adumbrated that particular issue and said, eh, why would we have children? Because look at the kind of life you have lived. And so now, I'm, I'm paying for your mistakes or the people we've done abortion to. So it may be that nature is catching up with you and all of that. So it has taken a lot of strength on my own part and on the part of my woman to walk this journey. And so when Paul was talking about what breaks marriages, I, I was in a place. So, so when I was in that place, one night I was hearing noise. You know, they were fighting. So I knew that it was a couple whose wedding we attended like nine months ago that were fighting. So in my nosy manner, in the morning, I went to meet my zebras. What was going on yesterday? I was hearing noise. The man said, hey, it's my wife. She, she was demon possessed. And so the family came to remove her. Ah, I was not satisfied. I said, bros, what do you mean? He said, it's very personal. I don't want to discuss it. So I went to our other neighbor. I said, bros, no. These people that were fighting yesterday, what exactly was the issue? They said, hey, ah, bros, in a serious matter, you know, since these people don't marry, the wife never gets the king. And the wife never get to the king, the, the family of the husband, they threaten her. So you can't go bring your own family, they can't come out the woman. I said, ah, me now, I should have been divorced. Then we were married for like seven years. I said, but I should have been divorced seven times now. Maybe it's every year. But what has brought the understanding of all of the things we are dealing with is because of our maturity, the two people that are banned. And so let me round up by saying that how do we now begin to position all of this matter within a policy? Because I believe that this is the, one of the cross of this particular yeah. session. How do we begin to... Now, when I became a Christian, you know, because that was the turning point for me, uh, when I became a Christian, I lived uh, for a while, and I began to understand that I needed to determine where I was going in terms of value. So I drafted, I drafted a constitution called the Taiwan Kilamine Life Constitution. 
in that constitution, I appointed myself as the commander in chief of the armed forces of my life, and my number one responsibility was to defend my territorial integrity. So I decided what I was going to believe. I decided what was going to be number one authority in my life. I decided all of those things. I decided the kind of woman I can end up with by because of my own story. And finally, I met my wife. When we met my wife, we developed a constitution. In this constitution, now we now have the constitution of the Taiwan Akilami family. In that constitution, my wife was magnanimous enough, by reason of our own injunction, religious injunction, to appoint to elect me as the commander in chief of the armed forces of the Taiwan Akilami family. In that family, commander in chief of the armed forces, not to oppress, but to maintain and protect the territorial integrity of our family. So, in that constitution, we decided who are we. What do we believe? How many children do you want to have? Uh, 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 we decided issue of sex. How do we solve crisis? Who can speak to us? Who can we not speak? For example, in my constitution of our family, my wife can report me to people who have designated, de designated that I can report them to. But in the constitution, it must not come to me as a surprise. He has a responsibility. No, no. She doesn't need my consent. No, no, let me conclude. She does not need my consent to report me. But she needs my. She needs to inform me yeah. that the way you are going, I don't understand it anymore. I'm going to tell so 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 first, so that when the person calls me, I can know that I'm expecting the call from the person. It's not that the person will call me and I'll say, "Sir, who came to you? How did you pass?" <laughs> so I think that if we can find, we've done a program where we discuss extensively family constitution, and I've developed a product there which I call Stenting Family. I I get it. So we need to have a constitution that determines the boundaries of our habitation, that determines our disposition towards even social media. For example, parents are doing what we call catfishing now. What is catfishing? You follow your child with a pseudo name on the internet, and you believe you, you know the child. Once you cannot know who your child is, and you want to follow the child by the internet, you are busy carrying placards around, bring back our girls. When your own girls with you are already lost, and you feel that they are still with you because they are still, they are, I don't know. So let me round up by saying, we need to go back, we need to go back to policy. We need to go back to policy. We need to go back to family concern that can strengthen us. And let me round up by saying, I'm not against therapy. Let me quickly say that. I'm not against therapy. I'm for therapy. I'm saying my position is this avis the fact that God did not create any child to be abused. Once a child is abused, all the therapy can do is to work the child, the adult who has become dysfunctional to a level. Life has been lost, which may never be regained again, despite therapy. So therapy are palliative, they are good, we must embrace them. That is why my message today is that enlightenment is superior to enforcement. So we need to make a lot of effort in preventing children from being abused than responding to abuse after being abused. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Himself is, I mean, I've just been watching your expression. We're just looking at him like, man, Taiwo is always on fire. A round of applause again for him, please. All right, uh, we have run out of time for this particular panel, but we wouldn't leave before asking this particular question. Now, everything we've said today has told us that family is very, very important. I mean, the importance of family to the growth and development and existence of every country cannot be underestimated. Right now, we, um, the United Nations um, person who spoke earlier mentioned that a lot of um, things, a lot of these um, interventions have people and organizations championing them, but we don't have anything for the family life. Okay, so we are here with the man of the moment himself, Mr. Praise for Uh Good afternoon, sir. How are you feeling today? I feel good. I'm so grateful that we're able to pull this through. Uh, I'm grateful to my team members, um, you know, and teammates, distinguished colleagues, and everyone who has, who has, you know, come in here today. I feel good. Okay. So generally speaking, um, I, I was I was privileged to be part of um, listening to everything, every great thing that people had to say in there when it comes to social media, marriages, life, sex, and everything. Um, you are doing your part in in, in inflecting um, um, these morals into people with what you do and all. But what would you like to say to people who do not have the opportunity to be here today to um, be able to reach out to others as well to make this impact? We said the people who are here should reach out to the people who are not here. But what we need to say to people 
is, you know, family is a system and we all need to learn about the system. So education is very key. You cannot assume that you know how to run your family. You can't run your family with the template of your mothers or your fathers because times have changed, events have changed, culture has changed. And that was why Omoju, I love his definition of culture, that it's per time, right? So we need to look at our own challenges in our days and say what systems we need to create to solve that problem, right? And I think education is key and that's why we're talking about education this year.